Today is a day that I've circled on my calendar for a long time when I was putting this podcast together because although it is not necessarily a weather-specific story from beginning to end, it does satisfy my natural earth-occurring phenomena requirements, you see. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History, now in its second year from the Weather Network in Canada. And now, buckle up, my friends, as we go back to a time when a volcano erupted against which all future eruptions would be stacked up against. Mount Vesuvius went critical all over the people of Pompeii, Italy, on August 24, 79 AD. This day in weather history, on those very, very rare occasions, I will attempt to take us back to a time that was so long ago that most think of it only as myth or legend and not really history at all. I've already discussed volcanoes on this podcast, and today is one that is not just prolific for the damage it caused, but because it is also the volcano that literally froze a period in time for all to see over the millennia that followed. This eruption, even after almost 2,000 years, two millennia, is still considered to be one of the deadliest in European history. After centuries of dormancy, Mount Vesuvius erupted in southern Italy, devastating the prosperous Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, while killing, and in many cases, entombing thousands in layers of ash. Mount Vesuvius exploded with a deadly cloud of superheated tephra and gases, 33 kilometers, that's 21 miles up into the air, ejecting molten rock, pulverized pumice, and searing hot ash at an apocalyptic rate of 1.5 million tons per second. As a matter of scientific fact, this expulsion is compared to releasing 100,000 times the thermal energy of the Hiroshima-Nagasaki bombings. And that story is our August 9th episode on this day in weather history. Several Roman cities of the time were obliterated and buried under massive pyroclastic surges and ashfall deposits, the most famous and immortalized being that of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Preserved eerily well by the extremely hot coating, it was possible for archeological excavations to discover a lot about the lives of the citizens of that time. This area has since become a major tourist attraction and is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, after all this time, what did we find out? To start, the total population of both cities was over 20,000. The remains of over 1,500 people have so far been found at Pompeii and Herculaneum, although the total death toll remains unknown due to the catastrophic nature of the eruption force. But did they have any warning? The evidence says yes. Earthquakes will normally precede volcanic eruptions as they are all entwined along the same fault lines. For this area, there was a major earthquake that occurred on February 5th, 62 AD, causing widespread destruction around the Bay of Naples and particularly to Pompeii itself. This had not happened since 279 BC. Then two years after this quake, another smaller earthquake took place in 64 AD, and then the tremors would continue for four more days, becoming always more frequent, leading up to the actual eruption. Yet still, the warnings went completely unrecognized. And then, at midday, on August 24th, 79 AD, this day in weather history, the opulence and hedonism came to a very abrupt and cataclysmic end when the peak of Mount Vesuvius exploded, propelling a 16-kilometer-tall mushroom cloud of ash and pumice into the stratosphere. For the next 12 hours, volcanic ash and a hail of pumice stones up to three inches in diameter showered Pompeii, forcing the city's occupants to flee in terror. Some 2,000 people stayed behind, holed up in cellars or stone structures, hoping to wait out the eruption. They are the ones that are on exhibit today, still in the very same place that they were last found. You see, the people who remained in Pompeii were killed the next morning on August 25th when a cloud of toxic gas poured into the city, suffocating all who remained. And then that was followed by a massive flow of rock and ash that caved in roofs and crushed the walls of the homes of those still in town, burying them instantly. Oh, there was a weather angle. It has been determined 
that a westerly wind protected Herculaneum from the initial outpouring of gas and ash from the eruption. But remember, this lasted for 12 hours. A giant cloud of hot ash that followed and gas surged down the western flank of Vesuvius, engulfing the city of the greatest of all the gods and burning or asphyxiating all who remained. This lethal cloud was followed by a flood of volcanic mud and rock burying the city. This day in weather history. Tomorrow is August 25th. It was on this day in 2017 when Hurricane Harvey roared through the state of Texas and into the history books as the only storm in American history to equal the devastating cost of the legendary Hurricane Katrina. And that's tomorrow, August 25th, This Day in Weather History, with me, your host, Chris May.